What's going on y'all, Machiavelli Mills TV? So my boy Melvin inspired me to actually make a video about this topic. We both are avid watchers of podcasts from former professional athletes. We watch All the Smoke with Matt, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. We watch, what's the Knuckleheads podcast with Quinn Richardson and Darius Miles. We just watched a podcast with, who was it on this podcast? Oh, it was Fred Taylor, it was Reggie Wayne, and it was also Chad Johnson, a.k.a. Ocho Cinco. So I'm not a hater of these guys. I really think these guys are very entertaining. They do a great job at keeping people intrigued with their conversation, and they also bring a unique perspective to the podcasting game, a, pers a perspective that a lot of people want to hear. But in the midst of this, Melvin asked me, are professional athletes taking jobs away from traditional college mass communication students? And this topic hit home to me when he said this. I'm like, damn, I never thought about talking about this because I was a mass communication major in college. Um, I got my bachelor's and master's degree in mass communication. So to me, the answer to that question is yes and no. I know it's a crazy answer, but let me just break it down, right? So yes, like this is the thing. When these networks, these TV networks are going to hire people who will bring them the most ratings. Because in TV and radio, ratings matter over everything. People want to have people hosting these shows that will get people to tune in by all costs. They would just get people to tune in no matter what. And in that instance, yes, professional athletes will be considered over traditional students but, uh, because they bring a unique perspective to broadcast TV and radio as they can tell about all these different experiences they had with certain uh, Hall of Fame players and, and coaches in locker rooms, on team bus rides and plane rides, and on they can talk about on-court and on-court slash field incidents and off-the-field incidents because they've been around these people all the time. They've been in locker rooms with them. They, fought, they, they, they were in the trenches with these athletes. So they can bring a unique perspective that a guy like me just coming straight out of college wouldn't be able to provide because, hell, I didn't play with Hall of Fame players. I wasn't um, teammates with uh, Aaron Rodgers. I wasn't teammates with Shaquille O'Neal. I wasn't teammates with LeBron James. But there are guys in the media who, who were and who was, and they can tell about all these experiences, right? Also, these former players have cultivated personal relationships with players during their playing time. So that can lead to them being able to bring certain special guests onto these TV shows. Uh, certain, Like, let's think about it, right? Um, they could, uh, a former teammate of Tom Brady, if, if Gronk was to go on TV, he could, he could bring Tom Brady onto the show, which would be groundbreaking for a platform like FS1 or ESPN and have Tom Brady on a, on a show talking to them. That's phenomenal. Uh, what's a T.O. could bring a Jerry Rice onto a platform because he's a former teammate of Jerry Rice. Anybody like Kendrick Perkins is a, is a former teammate of LeBron James. He can talk about playing with LeBron. All these different type of athletes that play with these Hall of Fame Pantheon great players, they can convince them to come onto the show, which is what uh, these networks would really like. Compared to a regular journalist, I wouldn't have those plugs. So they would be considered over a traditional college student. However, I just want to say this, though. Just because a former player has inside information on stories, does not mean they can tell them in an intriguing way at all, right? Being a broadcaster is much more than just reading stats and just talking and reading information. It's also about being charismatic, being witty, being able to improvise on certain occasions. It's about being articulate and being entertaining in general. Point blank, period. A broadcaster has to have the ability, the ability to draw people in and keep people watching at all costs. Not every, not, not, and not every professional athlete has this ability. For example, Tony Romo was extremely good at it. However, his former teammate, Jason Witten, not so much. And he tried to come back and play uh, for the Dallas Cowboys after that because he, he wasn't really good at broadcasting. Everybody is not suited for that job. However, another player, Shannon Sharp in particular, he's more known as a broadcaster than he was ever known as a player. And that's crazy because he's a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Fame player, and I'm telling you right now that more people recognize him from FS1 Undisputed than they do when he was playing. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that football players wear helmets where they're not as easily recognizable as a, as a basketball player in the NBA or whatever. But it's also because he is really, really good at his job. He's great at it, right? It's, therefore, many people tune in, to undis tune in to Undisputed simply because they didn't tune in to Undisputed because Shannon was going to be on there when the show started. They didn't tune in and say, oh, my God, Shannon going to be on. I got to watch it because they just recognized him as this, uh, this, this guy that they watched on TV. No, they, want, they went to watch the show 
And I, like, first of all, I guarantee you, a lot of people don't even know that Shannon was a Hall of Famer before, before this show came on, unless you were really a big football head. But I can guarantee you that people kept tuning in to FS1 Undisputed and still tune into it now because Shannon knows how to entertain people while also being informative, charismatic, char- excuse me, charismatic and articulate. He is fun to watch. I mean, the way the jokes that he has, he's funny, he's witty. Um, he's just a really talented guy and he knows how to make a conversation interesting. And that is a skill. Everybody is not blessed with that skill. Even if you're a pro athlete, everybody can't do that. Right, and I say, I say, um, it's a to, to to former professional athletes being heavily considered for jobs. I say it should motivate the traditional college mass communication student to step up our game and lean on our experiences in our school media departments to help us stand out. For real, we can lean on that because school teaches us things like how to stay on topic of conversation, how to properly segue from one topic to the next. And the importance of checking the credibility of sources that we get our information from. We learn those things when we're in college, when we're doing radio shows and TV shows. We learn about how to, the importance of all these things, which will help us in our, um, in the professional realm as we get older, right? We also learn how to prep for shows in school. I learned how to, how to properly uh, prep before a radio and TV show and how to have things handy so that just in case I needed them, they will be there as backup and I wouldn't have to be searching and looking crazy on air trying to find some information. We learn how not to have dead air when unexpected circumstances would occur. I remember in particular having to improvise when a co-host had their laptop and they were trying to pull up some information on a laptop and the laptop just malfunctioned and he was trying to find some information and I had to keep the conversation going. I had to keep the conversation interesting and I had to not sound like I was babbling about nothing. I had to make it sound good and sound convincing that, hey, this topic was still going on and the show was still popping, even though we were having a, 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 a malfunction on hand, on site. I had to keep it professional and keep it going. Um, also, I believe that you know, when we do these internships at school and radio and TV departments, we get years. I'm talking about from when I was a when I was a no, I'm sorry, when I was a sophomore to senior year, I had years, years of honing my craft and working on things like enunciation, inflection, and learning how to not use filler words constantly. Not to use those words like um, 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 every sentence and you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, every sentence because we would practice this all the time. We would give speeches. We would, um, not, um, I can't, I said, um, we would break down how to deliver certain things all the time. So I wasn't using, um, and you know, every sentence as I, I first, I, I was doing it at first. When I first started, I was saying, um, 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 a lot, a lot. And I had to get, I had to cut it out because is not considered professional on air. People don't want to hear those filler words all the time. So, and some athletes have interesting stories as well, but they don't know how to deliver these stories professionally. They don't know how to tell them with without with uh, without being unprofessional, or they don't know how to say it in a proper way that is able that is, that is able to be addressed on air. Additionally, although former professional athletes have special relationships with athletes that will help them be able to bring athletes on their talk shows and so on and so forth, some of these former athletes are afraid to have strong opinions about guys that they used to play with. They don't want to offend them. They don't want to seem like, hey, I'm being a bad guy. They don't want to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm talking down on a player when I know what it's like to be in in, in those trenches. I don't want to seem like the bad guy. While me, on the other hand, I'm not afraid to have a strong opinion about an athlete because, hell, I didn't play with these guys. I have no personal relationship with these guys. I don't have to be interacting with them in certain settings and none of that. So I don't care about telling the truth about how they've been playing on the, on the field or on the court. I'm not afraid to tell the truth about them. I'm not afraid to critique their play at all because there is not – I don't have anything to, to hang on to. There's no uh, vested, vested interest. I'm not trying to get guys – well – I would love to have guys on the show with me, but I'm not leaning on that as a crush to keep my job. I'm leaning on my ability to keep people entertained and to also be professional and informative while also being, um, what's the word I'm looking for? No, I think everybody, even Shannon and them are biased in certain ways, but also while being just, just keeping everything professional. I'm not interested in trying to get people on the show just so I can say, oh, that's not the only thing that I can bring to a network. And I know that. While if certain athletes, if that's their strong suit, being able to get people on a show, 
they're going to not want to say things bad, bad about certain guys because they don't want to disrupt those relationships where they can bring them people on the show. And just outside of their professional relationships with people, helping their professional career, they have personal relationships with these guys. They don't want to be say something bad about a guy that is the, the, the godfather to their children or is going to be at their kid's birthday party or is going to be at the local charity game that they go to every year or they, they don't want to be they don't want to say nothing negative about these guys at all but me i'm gonna say how i feel and i'm not going to be my opinions aren't going to be jaded or i don't know contrived or whatever because I have a relationship with this guy. Like, nah, it's going to... And I think those things will work in the favor of a a former college student that's coming out trying to get a job in the mass media field. We don't have any ties to these guys, and we can go off the cuff and say... We, we can't just go wild and say any type of thing belligerent, but as far as when it goes to certain, certain guys playing and how they've been playing, we can say it without always feeling like, oh my God, it's a big weight on my shoulder to say this because this guy is somebody that I've known for years and so on and so forth. So I think at the end of the day, yes, I believe pro former professional athletes will be considered over the regular kid coming out of school a lot of times because they have a unique perspective that people want to hear. People want to talk about those stories. When Craig Richardson and them talking about Talk about his stories playing in Phoenix, playing with Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire and, 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 and Joe Johnson and all that. People want to hear that. People want to hear about Steven Jackson talking about winning the championship with the San Antonio Spurs and Matt Barnes talking about that 07 We Believe team. People want to hear about Chad Single talking about his years in, in Seattle playing with Carson, Carson Palmer, the year uh, T.O. came on the team. They want to hear about all these different perspectives and what happened in the locker room and what happened with, between this guy and that guy. But at the same time, can those guys be entertaining and interesting while doing it? Now, we know certain certain personalities like Chad, of course, he's just box office. T.O. is box office no matter what, but not everybody is like that. And even if those guys are entertaining, can they be professional with it? Do they, do they have the ability to keep people intrigued outside of just talking about their sport that they have, that they have a background in? Can they talk about sports where they weren't? Can they talk about sports where they weren't in the locker room with guys? Can they talk about baseball, boxing, where they have no personal connections all the time and they weren't in a locker room, they weren't in training camp with these guys and they can lean on that as like personal experience? Can they talk about those things in a professional manner and still be entertaining when they have no personal connection to it? And I, I think that a college student can has the leg up in that because we don't really, we don't have no uh, personal connections to none of these guys. We can just talk off the cuss, cuss, and give our opinion, but also give an opinion in a way where it could be charismatic, it could be witty, and at the same time, it could be informative. So I think we have a leg up, leg up on that as well. And as far as the podcast game go, I got to give a shout out to my brother Blake Rowling because he suggested this. He he brought this up um, that guys can even though pro athletes are going into the media realm and they're having these little, um, not little, I'm sorry, when they're having these podcasts or they're doing these talks and stuff like that, that at the same time, these prominent figures can still hire kids coming out of college to work for them, work on their networks, and they can work on their own platform. I mean, there are podcasts and branch off and have all different type of shows within these podcasts and, and just to increase viewership, but at the same time, give these young kids jobs coming fresh out of school. They can, they, can, they can do that on their own podcast. Give these other kids jobs that can give a different perspective than them. So, you know, they can, like a Cam Newton, if he got a podcast, he can come hire kids coming fresh out of school that probably wouldn't get a, wouldn't get a look, uh, wouldn't get the looks that some of these other kids that are coming out of prestigious journalism schools would get in the first place, right? A kid like me coming out of HBCU, Mississippi Valley State University, wouldn't get the same look as a kid coming out of one of these Ivy League institutions or one of these schools that are known for having a top journalism program. But if a kid, uh, if a person like Cam Newton or if a person like Matt Barnes or Steven Jackson or Quentin Richardson sees my work and my ability on, on YouTube, they can say, you know what? That kid is dope. I like him. That kid is charismatic. That kid is witty. That kid is uh, it has the ability to improvise and, and provide great content. We're going to bring him into the fold. He wouldn't normally get an a, a, a opportunity from all these other big networks because he went to this small itty bitty school and he probably had to jump through a lot of hoops, but we can provide him with an opportunity to come here and we can provide him with a job. We can provide other kids like him from other small schools and other HBCUs with the opportunity to be presented to the world 
on our platform with all these big resources, all these big cameras and micro microphone equipment so that they can give their the best version of them of themselves to the public and at the same time help their careers, help their careers in return, which is dope. You know what I'm saying? So I think that professional athletes, yeah, they will be considered over us, but at the same time, they have a lot of power to help get people jobs if they have their own podcast outside of those TV networks and stuff like that. And I think it, it can also influence a lot of the kids to step up their game because not all pro athletes have the ability to keep people intrigued with their conversation and dialogue. They have great stories, but some of them don't know how to tell it. Some of them aren't as entertaining outside of their own sporting arena. Some of them just don't know how to relate information uh, that will always be entertaining to the public and always be funny to the public, which we may have ha we may have the ability to do. Machiavelli Mills TV.